What's up guys, welcome back. Today's gonna be a little different, not welding or anything, no projects right now. What I am gonna be doing is giving you a little welding rig tour of my truck, which is a Toyota Tacoma 2013, it's a second gen. Uh, with this video, I hope to show all the people that are getting into mobile welding that you don't need the big fancy truck, although it would be nice to have that, but it's just not ideal for your average kind of mobile welder that's doing smaller repairs, you know, not pipeline, or stuff where you're going to be running machine for 8 to 12 hours a day. So this is my budget build. This is the tools I use, the welders I use, and the truck I all put it in. And it works great for me. Um, I make a decent decent amount of money running it. I do it as a side hustle. Uh, hopefully one day it'll grow into something bigger. But for now, it works and it is super affordable. All right, guys. So this is my 2013 Toyota Tacoma. It's a second gen. Uh, right now I am running a Hobart 225. I got this machine used with only six hours on it for 2,800 bucks. I got a steal on it. I think they go for about five grand at Tractor Supply and it came with leads, so that was a plus. Another thing too, guys, when running an engine drive, one thing you gotta remember when you're when you're running it out of a mini truck, these trucks aren't meant to hold a lot of weight. So you're gonna have to beef up the suspension a little bit like I did. I had to add a heavy duty spring. The shocks, you can get away with the shocks, but if you're gonna go bigger on the spring, you're gonna have to get a longer shock. I already had suspension on it, but I noticed when I put this engine drive, this thing weighs close to 600 pounds. And even with the lift that I had, I had a three add a leaf and an overload spring on this just for when I would go up in the mountains and go camping and rock crawling and whatnot. Um, this truck sagged about three inches just with the welder that's not even including all my other stuff that i put in it so by adding these heavy duty leafs in it it actually picked it up two inches and they're rated for 550 pounds continuous weight so i have no issues the try the truck drives super smooth now with the welder i haven't driven it without it but i don't plan on taking this out anytime soon just because it's kind of a pain all right guys so i'm gonna load up the truck with my bag my welder and all the tools that i usually take on a side job it's usually miscellaneous stuff but i'm gonna load up and then i will break down and show you guys what tools i take what i like taking the most what i use the most you know extra cutoff wheels grinders stuff like that and hopefully you guys can take bits and pieces of this if you're trying to put a budget build truck together. So this is the basics that I take with me. I always take at least one grinder, usually two. I take one I can plug in and a battery. Um, drill bits, hole saw bits. I always bring an impact. I also have uh, ratchets and stuff. Extra flap discs, cut off wheels, grinding wheels. I just grabbed about four of these. I usually try to bring eight to 10, just depending on what I'm doing. I love these clamps. They don't hold a ton, but I mean, for what they are, they're quick, they're easy. All right, so let's break it down. Let's see what I got in this bag. I always bring extra batteries, cordless grinder. I love this grinder. It's Milwaukee, I think it's a six and a half inch. This thing is a powerhouse, hasn't failed me yet. I always bring extra batteries for the impacts. Uh, welding hood, I run the Lincoln, Lincoln Electric. Um, I had a pancake hood, which was really nice welding outside because you don't get the backlight, um, but I no longer have that. But this hood has done me done me pretty good. I also have the ESOB or whatever, whatever, however you say it. That one's been pretty good too. These are good to have if you're trying to lift up stuff or pry bar something out. You know, you never know when something gets wedged in or you need to pull something towards you or away from you. So these, I always take these with me. Let's see what we got. Gloves, always take a few pair of gloves. I'm always burning holes in them. Welding caps. I like these welding caps by uh, Weld Nation. These have been pretty good so far. They're comfortable. Uh, little arm guard from Lincoln. Save, uh, save your t-shirts from turning out like that. Um, extension cord, 
I usually bring at least a hundred foot. This is about 25 foot. So I always take about three to four of those. Another welding cap. Um, miscellaneous wrenches. Those are good to have. For my impact, these are cool by Makita. I think I got them at Home Depot for about 14 bucks a piece. So these are pretty nice. Go with the 3 8 impact. Another grinder. Like I said, you know, the cordless ones are very convenient, but the batteries do run out. So depending if the job doesn't go as planned, I always bring two to three batteries with me. If I blow through those, this is my, uh, my fail safe. So I like having a battery. Always have tape measures because I uh, never fails. I'll, I will leave one of these at a job. So this is pretty much, you're getting a repair done and a free measuring tape because I will forget these. Always bring a couple of these because somehow losing them on the jobs all the time. My consumables for the MIG welder. All right, speed squares. I got one regular speed square that I didn't cut. And then I got this speed square that I did cut. So that way when I'm checking my square after I've welded it, um, this clears the weld and I can still see if I'm square to whatever I'm welding. Little hammer, chipping hammer. This is great for when you're MIG welding, you just dip your nozzle in here and you don't get a whole lot of buildup and gunk in, your, in the tips. So those are always a solid. I always have miscellaneous like bolts and stuff. That way, if I show up to a job with a broken bolt, you know, I can weld this to it and pull out whatever's broke. Rods. I like running Excalibur. These are a little more pricey, but I do get cleaner welds with these. So Excalibur, I like running eighth inch, 7018. Uh, I got 6011. This is good when you're welding galvanized for how much I hate welding galvy. This is a good rod to use or 6010. What else? Safety glasses. More gloves. Another welding cap. Metal gauge. That's always nice. I always take a rod bucket when I'm welding with stick. That way I'm not throwing my rods everywhere, having to collect them at the end of the job. It's a good way to keep everything clean. And that is my basics. That's, that's what I take with me if I just get a call out. I don't really know what I'm looking at yet. If they haven't sent me a picture, if they just say, hey, this is broke, can you come fix it? And they're not really good at giving details. These are my basics. So I can usually get a lot done with just these little mounted tools. I do have more. I'll show you guys here in a bit. But this, if you're just starting out, this is more than enough. If you're doing your basic repairs, you don't even need that. Before I got that, the only reason I bought that is because I was so tired of having to lift up. Uh, I had just a regular generator that I would load up, like a champion generator from Tractor Supply that I bought. And it was such a pain to lift this thing up by myself in the truck that every time I had to run out to a job, it would take me, you know, an hour just to load all my equipment up. Now I got it down to about 15 minutes. I keep everything in this bag that I usually take. You know, I got such a good deal on that. It was justifiable. I'm making the money that that's already paid off from a couple jobs. So that worked out for me. But if you get a small trailer or if you have a ramp or some way of loading a regular generator in your truck, you can get by with running, you know, I forgot, I forgot what size it is, but Hobart makes just a regular little stick welder generator. Those are awesome for just starting out. I don't know if you can run a machine on it. Um, and you got to be careful with running generators on a wire fed anyways, because it's dirty power, uh, a generator power fluctuates, so you run the risk of messing up your machine or just not getting true power that you're setting your machine to, and that's what I found out. So when I got this, it was a game changer. For my wire fed, I'm running the Vulcan Omi 220 Pro. This is a Harbor Freight model. Um, at work, I ran a lot of Millers, Lincolns, um, this thing is awesome for what you pay. I think I got this out the door for about under 900 bucks. 
with a coupon code. You can TIG, STICK, and MIG. I run STICK off of that just because I can go way hotter, but if I'm in a pinch or I need to get further than my leads or whatever, I, I can run it on this. I, I choose not to though because I can only go so hot. But for MIG, this thing's awesome. I've run flux through it, awesome for little gate repairs, working on trucks, cars, go-karts, whatever it is. You know, if I'm not working on heavy equipment, that's my go-to because it's quick, I can get the job done fast, and it looks clean and pretty. If the weather's nice and there's not too much wind, I'll take my bottle with me. You know, I keep a small bottle, 75-25. Um, it's small enough to where I can load it up and still have a little bit of room. Now for when I'm working on heavy equipment, tractor buckets, stuff like that, and anything over a half inch, I like to take my oxygen acetylene. Um, these are great to have if you need to bend, cut, anything, you know, really, these things come in handy. They are a little pricey. Depending on the job I get called out for, I may or may not take these, but usually these are only when I'm working on a heavy equipment or like I said, thicker metal if I need to cut out brackets or replace a, a big chunk of steel or something, this is my go-to. I don't waste time cutting it with a grinder like I used to. I'm take you out back to my scrap pile now. Depending on whatever the job is, if I need to replace some stuff, if I, I always save my scraps. So that way, you know, save yourself some money. This stuff costs so much nowadays, especially in California. So if I come across a job where I have bits and pieces that I can use for my own, save myself some cost, that's a plus. Another little scrap pile. This is a lot of my, my smaller stuff, smaller cut pieces. I save everything. You know, if, if I think I can make something out of it or use it on a job, I will save it. Always keep nuts and bolts. That's the random pile. I have an assortment of nuts and random bolts and stuff here so this isn't really part of the mobile mobile side but you know tools make money so invest in your tools they don't have to be snap on and all that stuff most of this is harbor freight and craftsman and uh it, it works out just fine for me i'm not a mechanic to where i'm using these all day every day so you know i got sockets i got my screwdrivers pry bars torque wrench, you know, an assortment of ratchets. I got all those, all my pliers, welding pliers, you know, wire strippers. Always have a ton of these. Collected a, quite a bit over the years. I think I got more sockets, oil filter wrench. These come in handy, these Allen, Allen sockets. I got T-handles, which are random. There's the wrenches, open ends. A lot of my stuff's Harbor Freight, man. I mean, for the price, for the price you get on hand tools from Harbor Freight, they're electric tools I, I don't cheap out on just because I use those often but a lot of the sockets and stuff, it's either Craftsman or, you know, Harbor Freight. It's cheap, I'm gonna use it a couple times, and if it breaks, I just take it back. For power tools, I, I stick with Milwaukee. I've had a lot of luck with them. I use them for everything. I already have a lot of the batteries, so magnets are nice. Gloves. More Allens, more batteries for the M12, the smaller ones. And then I got a seven inch grinder. Again, when I'm working on heavy equipment, I take the seven inch. So that's, that's pretty much what I use for tools. If I can figure out a way to mount a vise on the truck, that would be nice or maybe somehow incorporate a hitch or something that way it's removable that would be a cool idea but yeah guys this this is my basic setup this is the tacoma welding rig tell me what you guys think if you think i should flatbed this truck put some toolboxes on it i've been playing with that idea quite a bit not sure how much more weight the truck can handle 
because I'm on stock gears on 34s. So the more weight I add, the slower the truck and the worse my gas mileage gets. So right now I'm at a happy medium to where I can load up all this stuff. The truck still drives normal and you know, it's been a good truck so far. What works for me may not work for you. I like these tools because if I've come into a pinch or a stopping point in a job where I need a tool, I run out and buy it. And that tool works for me because of the application that I needed it for. It may not work for you until you come across something like that. So don't go out and spend all this money on tools. You know, just wait, do a couple small jobs, see what you need, run out and buy what you need. The next job, same thing, you know, only get tools for the application or the job that it calls for. You're going to go out and buy all this stuff because you see it on YouTube or, you know, Instagram, all this stuff, these hundred thousand dollar welding rigs, these guys buy the tools for the jobs they do. So if you're just getting into mobile welding or you want to get a cheap welder, get a generator, get a couple grinders and go from there because that's gonna be your best bet. It's gonna be more bang for your buck and more money in your pocket. All right guys, with that being said, this is gonna wrap it up. The Tacoma welding rig, it can be done. If you got a mini truck and you wanna start making some money, go for it. You don't need the big truck. If you got any questions, let me know down in the comments and I'll, I'll give you any more information that I can help with. I appreciate you guys. Until next time.